So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to people who, from wherever you're joining in. Uh, today, we have an exciting session lined up for you in our Bodhi series, which is our industry leader uh, talk series, uh, which is around transforming the pharmaceutical operations with effective data governance and guardrails. And with us, we have Chetan Sohagya, who's the Director of Commercial Data Analytics and Reporting at Alexion Pharmaceuticals. And we'll be joined with our host for the session, Ankita Agarwal from Polestar. A bit about our speaker. So Chetan holds uh, over 15 years of experience, of deep experience in healthcare, focusing on commercial data strategies and insights. And he's going to talk a bit about what commercial uh, data strategies look like and why it's important in the pharmaceutical industry and how it's important in today's age and time. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to hand over to our host, Ankita, to bring Chetan on stage. Ankita, over to you. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Fuzan. So, uh, exactly, it is uh, good morning and good evening, everyone. And uh, it is my pleasure uh, to have Chetan Sohagya to be the host of uh, such a seasonal professional's uh, host today and he holds a 15 years of extensive experience in the healthcare industry uh, with a proven record of managing div diverse commercial data strategies and insight solutions and also he has made significant contribution across commercial sales and marketing supply chain medical and executive leadership domains uh, he he's a, a proactive and strategic leader who excels at driving data driven growth through in innovative and actionable insights and as a trusted data and business intelligent expert he has also constantly delivered value solutions that empower organizations to make informed decisions optimize operations and enhance overall business performance so Today's topic, which is transforming pharma operations with effective data governance, governance and guardrails, Chetan will enlighten us with all the knowledge and experience he holds over more than a decade. And um, I am I am very much honorable to uh, to actually welcome you, Chetan, to have this uh, session today and help our help our audience to know more about the pharmaceutical industry and your journey in that in in it so oh, thank you ankita and uh, full star team for organizing uh, organizing this such a wonderful session and uh and again thank you uh, all the audience who is listening to me as well as the team here uh i'll try to do my best uh to uh, explain as well as give you some overview about the rare disease area how uh, the rare disease area evolves as actually and the importance of the role, what are the key factors that we need to consider and so on, basically. But uh, I'm really excited to share my uh, experience and journey that I have been with uh, with the rare disease area and uh, organization. So I'm more than happy to, uh, to be here on this uh, wonderful session. So what we're going to cover uh, in today's call or today's session is uh, definitely providing very high level overview about the what is that uh, rare disease area look like in the pharmaceutical industry. We have like pharmaceutical industry has been, uh, you know, a deep driver, I would say, in terms of how it is transforming the patient's life and all basically, right? But very particularly in the rare disease, why we are talking about the rare disease. So we'll cover some of the portion over there. Uh, of course, as we are talking about the rare disease and now in today's trend, the data is the key for every business decision, right? And we'll talk more about what is the role importance of the data in the pharmaceutical industry and very specifically in the rare disease area. And uh, we also know as we are working with the data, right? What are the key concept of the data governance that we need to keep in mind, right? Uh, which will help organization, which will uh, guardrail the organization as well as individuals while using the data. Other thing is uh, when we implement the data governance physically in our uh, particular workplace or organization, right? How important it will be, right? How it will help us or organization basically, right? To drive the excellence in the industry and very particularly in our pharmaceutical industries. 
And of course, anything that we do currently, uh, if you think about anything that you are doing on day-to-day -day life, right? Technology plays very important role, right? So uh, with, with the same aspect, there is, no, uh, there is no look back on, okay, hey, there is no technology. Yes, technology is the, I would say, center point across what we do in the data governance also. So we'll talk a little bit more about the data governance and uh, at the end, we'll have some key conclusion out of the session as well as we'll open the session for the Q&A. So uh, moving on to the uh, next slide, uh, we'll definitely discuss about how effective the data governance strategy and guide rails uh, will drive the excellence in our business. So before we go there, let's start talking about what is that disease in the pharmaceutical right and why we are talking about the data governance in the rare disease area, right? So just to give you some background around the rare disease area, right? The rare disease area is very critical for the patients who are suffering for one or other disease, which is right now not curable or not even diagnosable, right? So there are so many rare diseases and every day a scientists are finding new rare diseases, uh, which is not curable or sometimes not uh, identifiable, right? So as of now, we know there are more than 7,000 uh, rare diseases identified, but not all the disease area has uh, treatment available or uh, cure available. So there are only 5% of the area or 5% of the rare disease has the uh, some kind of cure or treatment available. That means we have a gap of 95% of the rare disease. Now, what does that mean basically, right? And how it is uh, challenging for commercial as well as in the clinical side, basically, right? Definitely as the rare disease, as name itself says, rare disease, right? Rare disease means sometime you will find one patient in the uh, population of thousand or one million patient, pop, pay, uh, you know, patient population, or I would say people basically, right? So it's very hard to find the rare disease. First of all, if somebody has the rare disease, it's very hard to find the person. As this is the rare disease, for the same same challenges is on the caregiver as the uh, as well as at the care uh, healthcare organization to first of all diagnose it basically right because there is not enough education about the uh, new diseases every day there we are finding so education is also very important right so there are a lot of challenges in terms of okay uh, in terms of clinical trials as well as in terms of the commercial or uh, commercialization right because it's not like, okay, as soon as we find, uh, you know, rare disease, team is working on it uh, and they have like, you know, phase one, phase two study and done and we can directly go for the commercial. It's not that easy, right? Because it has to go through several safety, efficacy uh, kind of uh, programs when we are doing the clinical trials. And of course, uh, very specifically, if I talk about the US, US has very, uh, stringent requirement in terms of getting the approval for the commercializing for any drug. And rare disease as itself says, it's, you know, it's very hard to treat. So sometimes it is very challenging to get the uh, product into the commercialization or uh, in the marketing phase. So a lot of challenges in the commercialization as well as, uh, as this is very controlled environment, pharmaceutical by itself in the US is very controlled environment, right? There are so many regulatory requirements that we need to feel, fulfill before we uh, launch the drug uh, and have it available for the patient care. So there are so many things that we have to take care of it, right? So you can think about the patient privacy, right? Efficacy of the patient, right? How we can create the, you know, uh, particular treatment or uh, diagnosis for patients right so there are so many complex regulatory requirements not in terms of just how we carry out the clinical trials how we do the commercialization but any activity that we do right it's within the compliance it's within the uh, privacy guidance and all basically right? so everything that we do it uses the data so the data is the key as well as how we use the data within those boundary are very critical basically so that's where uh, the role of data governance will uh, you know play into picture basically so moving on to uh, the next right now we'll talk more about how the data is important basically right we we thought okay this is the rare disease right? it's very challenging to uh, do the clinical trial commercialization but what are the roles of uh, data in the rare disease basically right so starting from uh, you know, uh, creating the clinical trial to the commercialization, basically. 
So if we think about like overall journey uh, for the drug discovery as well as the marketing, right? Data is everywhere. Data is always the backbone of pharmaceutical and very specifically for the rare disease, it's very critical. It builds the foundation of how do we identify the right patients for the recruitment, right? How do we identify the right site for the patient recruitment during the clinical trial, right? Uh, and the rare disease is not like a one size fits all patient sometimes, right? So we need to know how can we create or curate each and every treatment for the patient, basically. How can we personalize those treatments for the patient? So these are some of the challenges as well as uh, as we are going through the clinical trial, it, it might take a year long journey or years long journey, basically, right? And we have to keep doing the trials, get the data, analyze the data, right? And optimize the clinical trial every time, right? And at the same time, right, it's not just, okay, hey, patient is getting cured, but we also wanted to make sure it is safe for the use for the patient, right? It's not impacting a uh, patient's life otherwise, right? So there are so many regulatory requirements we have to go through, right, when we are going to do the clinical trial, right? And for each and every step, there is a data. There is a data readout. Without data readout, there is no progress in the clinical trial, right? Without data readout, you don't know how to change or the, your clinical trial design, as well as how to identify the right patient, how to identify the right clinical trial sites. So these are like very critical role uh, of the data in the clinical side. But as soon as we get the approval, for example, FDA approves the drug for rare disease area, right? There are another challenges because rare disease area is such a way that like you don't find lots of patients around it. You don't find education around the disease area because this is this may be like very, uh, unknown disease for the uh, healthcare provider, right? So when we are going in the market, we need to find out what is my right market size basically, right? If your market size is very small, right? In terms of the patient population, right? How do you uh, design your, you know, pricing for the, uh, for the product that you are uh, going into the market, right? Because there is so much uh, resources, cost involved in the clinical trial, as well as when you commercialize uh, the product, there is so much cost that is involved during the marketing, basically, right? So you need to make sure you cannot just market the drug uh, like other drug uh, does, basically, right? Where we have a bigger patient population. This has to be very much designed such a way that you are identifying the right targets, basically, right? Uh, find the markets, basically, where is your right target? So there is so much involved in the commercialization right from defining the what is market access look like. Market access means defining the pricing also. Targeted marketing means you need to find the right physicians, healthcare organization who can really diagnose and, the treat, and treat patient in the rare disease area. At the same time, you also need to fulfill the regulatory and compliance uh, you know, requirement after the marketing. For example, you cannot just market your product for organization benefit, but it, it has to be more towards the patient benefit. And same thing, once you have the uh, product in the market, you have the brand in the market, you also need to, as an organization, we think about, okay, hey, this is proven treatment for one or other indication. How can we use the similar treatment or how can we find the indication or use the same product for other indication, right? For that also, we definitely need the real world evidence or real world data, right, to really prove that, okay, yes, this product that is already marketed for one indication, can be used for other indication, right? So in order to identify those opportunities also, this is very important for us to use the real world data, right? And rare disease area, very particularly if I say about it, uh, in US very particularly, we have generally patient support program where patient support program help patients basically throughout their treatment journey uh, in terms of if they have any uh, primary requirement for before getting into the, uh, you know, uh, the drug trial or drug infusion, basically, right? Uh, what are their, uh, I would say, uh, questions as well as what are their uh, roadblocks before they are come on to treatment? For example, they might have the peer uh, roadblock, right? Sometimes physician might not be, uh, you know, uh, willing, not, might not willing to take that uh, patient on the journey, basically, right? So that's where the patient support program also help us right, to make sure patient is getting the right treatment. But in order to do that, we need to have lots of data, right? Because that data is the key where we can educate the people why we are doing this, 
how it will help the patient and how it will help the uh, overall organization. So definitely data is very much important in the rare disease area and it's asset to the organization, right? And it's very hard to find the real world evidence as well as the data uh, for the in the rare disease uh, industry. But as we are playing with the data, right? What are the key critical component, right? That we can think of uh, in, in terms of the data governance, right? So if you can move on to the uh, next slide, right? That will definitely open the eye, okay, hey, yes, data is there, right? We cannot just use the data as is, right? There are so much things that we need to think about before we start using the data, right? So we really need to think about, okay, what is the framework look like for the data governance, right? How we can guardrail our organization, how we can guardrail the patients as patient privacy, patient data privacy, uh, healthcare organization overall, right? So there is so much going on in terms of the data governance, right? But if we talk a very critical role about, okay, regulatory compliance requirement, right? We need to make sure it is adherence to the uh, country regulatory uh, and privacy and compliance requirements. Sometimes individual state might have their own compliance and regulatory requirements. Uh, in US, there is HIPAA concept rights where we have to make sure that patient privacy is very important, right? So if we have the consent for the patient, we can uh, collect some of the data for the patient and use some of the data for one or other use. But it's not like when we have the consent for the patient, we can just use patient data for anything that we do, right? Same thing in the European region, they have the GDPR concept, right? Uh, which also has like very uh, strict requirement in terms of gathering the data as well as utilization of the patient data uh, for any kind of per, uh, use cases in the pharmaceutical. And a uh, very important thing is uh, definitely once you put the guardrails in terms of the regulatory requirement in terms of the compliance, privacy, taking, making sure the data is secure and all, the data quality plays another important role here, right? So how do we manage the data quality basically, right? Uh, it's not like, okay, every data is clean, right? So we need to make sure there are a framework designed after the data quality. Once you have the data quality, you need to make sure data is secure, not secure just for the organization and outside of the organization, but within the organization also, right? How can we put the controls over it so that only intended user have access to certain data, not all data, right? So we also need to make sure there is appropriate control data security in place. Uh, at the same time, audit and trail is very important. Like audit and trail will help us to identify how do we reutilize the data? Who has access to the data? When there is a regulatory audit, basically, how we can uh, provide those inputs to the regulatory uh, departments, basically, right? So we need to keep monitoring and keep auditing the data, who has access, who doesn't have it, right? So it's kind of operationalized and operating thing, basically, right? It's not like once we set the rule, it is set in stone, right? We always need to continuously audit, okay, who has access, uh, who somebody has to change the role in the organization. We need to change the role for the data access and all, right? But we continuously need to audit, monitor, and change the uh, data access control within the organization. Another thing is, is once you have the data, you also need to come up with what is their retention policy, disposal, uh, disposal policy, right? It's not like once you have the data, you can keep it with you for forever basically, and you can keep utilizing as is, right? Because there are so many regulations, so many uh, policies are changing over the period of time. We need to keep track on it, making sure it is adherence to the to those policies, as well as if you are buying the data from the third party vendor, for example, right? There are certain rules and regulation around how long you can keep the data, right? Uh, how you can dispose the data basically. At the same time, when you are uh, having the, you know, consent for the patient to get their data, there is a requirement also, how long you can keep the patient data, for what uh, purpose you can use the data, right? So there is a lot of data retention, disposal policy that we have to put into place. Another thing is cross-functional alignment, which goes hands in hand with the access control, audit trail monitoring and all, right? It's not like, okay, if I have data access, I can share it with anyone within the team basically or within the organization, right? There are certain guardrails that we have to put to make sure there is a cross-functional alignment in terms of the usage of the data, in terms of the sharing the data and all. And of course, as I mentioned, the data governance is not the process that you implement and it will work automatically. Right? You always need to keep eye on it. We always need to uh, 
uh, enhance those things, right? And you have to continuously improve the processes over the period of time. And we always need to adapt to the changes in, ter in terms of uh, how regulatory environment is changing, how technology is changing, right? So we always need to look look forward for the continuous imp uh, improvement in the processes, improvement in the technologies that we use. So with that, right, what, how it will help basically, right? Once you put all the guardrails, right, what are the benefits that data governance will help or drive basically, right? So once you have like effective data governance in your organization, right, you will see good data quality, right? Because we have taken care of the data quality uh, framework, basically. We have taken care of the uh, you no know, regulatory requirement in terms of usage of the data, in terms of accessing and all, right? So the benefit that you can definitely realize in terms of, okay, hey, you have the standardized data across different systems, right? You have like one version of the data. Same thing, the data has like, there is one set of data, but it's not like it will be in the one system. You might use the data for n number of different purposes and for n number of different purposes, you might have n number of different systems where you need to federate this data, right? But we wanted to make sure it is standardized across the system, right? So the data integrity and the compliance in this case also is very important, right? When we federate the data into different systems, it has to be tightly integrated with the uh, one or other system. It is adherence to the compliance and all. And other thing is, as a pharmaceutical industry, it's not like we are just working with one data set. We might have n number of different data sets, whether it is internal or external. We need to make sure we are mastering the data, right? So data governance framework will help us to master the data. For example, if I say mastering the data, you might have the product coming from five different 10 uh, places basically, right? And somebody say A, somebody says B, right? But product is one product basically, right? We have to master the data coming from different source system, right? So there may be product master, payer master, or uh, so many other entity that can be mastered basically within the pharmaceutical industry. Another thing is, once you have the framework in the place uh, for the data governance, it will be very easy to help uh, in terms of governing their control, governing the security of the data in the system, as well as accessing the data. And once you standardize the data, uh, you have the policies in place for the data governance, right? Once you expose the data for the end user, right? It will become very evident that they, they take, that data can be consumed very easily for generating the insights or for generating any analytics or on the go basically right so all in all basically right uh, effective data governance will help us basically help the organization right to make sure there is a standard in the data there is an integrity across all the system when you are using the same data right there is a uh, right control in terms of the policies securing the data as well as uh, once you have the data it's not sitting in the silos but it is being used by different stakeholders for many other use cases, right? So this will help us to uh, produce any kind of outcome really quickly, basically, right? And as the data is, uh, you know, standardized in one system, basically, and it's federated into different systems, it will help us to collaborate, uh, work collaboratively with, with uh, multiple stakeholders, for example, in the pharmaceutical, right? It's very important to use some of the data set, right? Where our medical teams are there, where our commercial teams are there, they are talking to each other, right? And there is a transparency in terms of what kind of data they share and they can talk along with those lines. So, so there is so much happening behind the scene, right? Uh, operationally, so we wanted to make sure data governance framework will take care of a lot of other things that will help us in uh, excel our operations in the pharmaceutical industry. So. Uh, these are the key benefit, uh, I can say, uh, how uh, basically data governance help us in, uh, or for, uh, once you put the framework, right, how it will help in the uh, data overall operations and bring the organization to the excellence level, right? Now with that, what we talked about, a lot of uh, theoretical, or I would say uh, conceptual thing, right? But each and every step that we talked about, right, it requires the technology behind the scene. Right. So moving on to the next piece, right? What is the role of the uh, technologies that we do see currently and in the future, this technology may evolve basically, right? So a couple of examples I wanted to give here, right? So what are the roles basically, right, of the advanced technology, right, that we have currently? So we talked about, okay, hey, how do we see the one version of the same thing, right? So that 
that's where master data management will come into picture that will help us to create the golden record for uh, for the any kind of entity for example if i'm talking about healthcare organization or healthcare prescriber basically right i might be getting like five different profile from 10 different uh, sources but how do i create one curated record for one healthcare professional or organization basically right that's where the master data management uh, platform will come into play basically right? this is just one example it's not just full list you might have like master for the product you might have master for the patient sometime so there are so many uh, so master data management is the concept uh, as well as the platform right but that you can apply in apply in so many domains another thing is very important for the end user perspective right because organization might have so much data right but understanding the data is not easy, right? If I provide the data to someone, they don't know what it is basically, right? How can we make that team basically unable to understand that data, right? The data catalog is, is very important uh, when we work with the data, right? And there are so many platforms available for to help us to organize the data, to uh, make sure we have the catalog available for the data, which is searchable, right? So that user can understand what kind of data we have and what kind of insights or uh, what kind of uh, use cases we can have basically right that uh, that will enable the organization to use the data effectively so data cataloging is another platform right which is again driven by the technology when we are generating the insights uh, or uh, generating any dashboards reports now advanced analytics right everything is coming now such a way that ai is now in the picture even you, if you talk about the business intelligence tool even if you talk about the data engineering, if you talk about the advanced analytics, nowadays with the uh, advanced technology like AI and machine learning is helping us to uh, get the insight faster, get the data cleansing faster, for example, right? A lot of automation is happening on the fly now. So it's all driven by the technology right now. So AI and machine learning is also very important right now, uh, how it is helping us. It's not only for the commercialization, it is also helping on the clinical side also. Nowadays, you might be hearing a lot of things about the AI machine learning, how it is helping in terms of image recognition, right? So similar technology is used, I would say, in the healthcare industry also, right? Uh, where it can scan the X-rays, for example, uh, uh, as well as it can scan the handwritten uh, text from the healthcare prescriber. And merging all the data, right? AI machine learning can help prescribing or i would say help giving the conclusion okay hey this is what it, it may be happening with the patient and it can also prescribe what should be the next step for the patient right so yeah machine learning is also critical role uh, play the critical role in the governance data lake data is everywhere right so we need to make sure it is stored in secure place and it's it is accessible as well as uh scalable for the future use so data lake is another platform uh, which will play a very pivotal role in the data governance to make sure data is stored secured as well as there is a proper access control put in place uh, over there and a lot of reporting tools now we have so back in those days like earlier days we used to have like a standalone technology which can generate the dashboard reports and every requirement we need to tweak it basically right but nowadays there are advanced technology available right in the business intelligence area also right which will help end user to generate any kind of insights on the fly generate any kind of analytics using the data which is available in the data lake right so if you think about everything together right data once you explore the data using the data catalog right you are trying to access the data through the business intelligence or ai machine learning technologies uh, and the data is already available in the data uh, data lake right so all this like ecosystem plays very critical role in the uh, you know data governance very specifically i'm talking about the pharmaceutical and pharmaceutical industry these are the key component right now or i would say backbone of the data governance uh, once you put the framework uh, around it actually so all in all uh, if uh, i would say uh, in terms of the data, data governance right it is basically framework data governance is the framework which is critical for any organization including the disease also right i'm saying uh, is the asset we don't look at the data governance as a additional process that will slow down the stuff of course it might slow down at some places but you have a lot of other benefits 
having the data governance in place and data governance framework help organization individual right everywhere to make sure data is secure it's compliant uh, it is adherence to the uh, you know compliance requirement as well as there might be like some other requirement at at organization level right so all those thing is helping us basically okay framework is there it is we don't look into the data governance as a process but it is a key key asset which will help everyone in the organization to uh, make sure we are working hands in and basically making sure everything is secured including persona including organization data right and we and the technology itself is enabling all the data governance processes to you know uh, go live basically and make it happen ultimately right and once you have all this thing in place basically right if you think about the framework and the technology together it will enable the organization so that you know in the future long journey basically when you see it's affecting or i would say it is uh, helping us operationalizing lot of uh, work that we do in the red is either in the clinical side or on the commercial side basically right so it will help us to improve any kind of processes and ultimately right what we do in the red disease area we are trying to uh, take care of or i was creating the uh, effective treatments for the patient so ultimately what we do right making sure by without breaking any compliance and privacy we are trying to make sure we have the effective outcome for the patient right we are reaching out to the right patient at the right time so that they have the right treatment available before uh, it is too late for the patient so key conclusion as i mentioned like data governance is a framework combining the technology peoples together help a organization to guardrails in in each of the aspect basically uh, and overall improve, improving the uh, outcome of the patients so uh, with that uh, i definitely would like to open the floor and uh, have ankita back on the on the stage uh, and we can have any uh, question and answer session thank you thank you so much even for uh, such an insight insightful session and sharing all the uh, knowledge with us so uh, i'll just uh, invite the audience to put, put up your questions on the chat window and maybe we can take take it up if you have any please use the chat option to send in your questions i can see a question directed to me i think it's not visible to you ankit i'll just read it out yeah so the question is uh, chetan uh, what mm -hmm. is an example of a real rare disease treatment that your team is able to help uh, become more accessible easy to the general population so uh, no very good question right so the rare disease is uh, critical right uh, there is no awareness first of all in the general population right so it's very hard so rare disease will uh, in order for us to reach to the rare disease patient right there are so many channels we have to utilize first of first channel is definitely our healthcare providers right we need to make sure we have the right targets right who can treat and diagnose the patient right so we have a lot of thing programs as an organization they are working with the healthcare provider to educate them at the same time right we also need to use the technology for example dtc right uh, dtc is the channel uh, where you can uh, i would say uh, make the rare disease uh, awareness and very particularly if i say right in our example we we are using so many channels right either our reps are uh, talking to physicians or we are sending the marketing emails or uh we are also having the commercial ads basically right which is very focused to one or other disease basically right and just it's not that much simple i would say right uh, for example if i am talking about the commercial ads basically i cannot run my commercial ad anytime anywhere basically right there is so much brain behind it so much analytics behind it before we do the commercialization or uh, put the commercial out in the uh, on the air basically right so 
Definitely, uh, those are the thing uh, we thought about when we we were working with the uh, rare disease area, right? How can we make sure it is accessible to patient, right? Accessible means first we need to find the patient, right audience, right at the right time. So using the right channel, right time, uh, as well as the right people, basically to talk, uh, is very important. And in doing all these things, first thing is always data. Basically, we need to find okay, what is the geographic we are talking about, right? Uh, what time frame? People are, for example, if I'm talking about the commercial ads in the television, right? Nowadays, you have so many platforms within the television that you see, right? So many programs are coming, right? But before we broadcast the ad, we need to find, okay, hey, this treatment is for what kind of uh, patient population we are targeting? Are we talking about male, female, right? Are we talking about kids, young generation or old generation, basically, right? So there are so much segmentation happening, so much uh, based on this segmentation, we tie it back to the, okay, hey, what people like to see basically, right? And it's not necessary people are like same uh, program in one geography versus other geography, right? So we have to match, merge so many data sets and then come up with the idea, hey, this is the right effective timing channel uh, and geography that we can broadcast our, uh, you know, ad basically or ad campaign basically, right? Uh, otherwise, whatever you uh, do basically it may not be uh, uh, you know uh, impactful as well as it will be very costly for the organization to do the marketing for any uh, product and to reach out the right patient thanks chetan uh, there is oh, there are a couple of questions uh, i'll just read out the next one how do we syndicate the right data points to the sales representatives so that they can educate the healthcare providers amount of information can be overwhelming so do you see a yes. role of ai ml uh, in simplifying the messages to educate the sales representatives no that's uh, that's a very good question actually right? that's the uh, challenge i would say in every industry I, I would say because now we have so much data right I don't want to overwhelm my reps, basically, who is in the field with so much information because giving the data is not the key to uh, key for the organization. Giving the insights, basically, is the key, right? I wanted to make sure my rep is informed very well. Okay, hey, if you are reaching out to Dr. John, for example, right? What is the Dr. John's profile look like? What Dr. John's like, basically, right? If he prefer to meet, in, uh, meet face to face or he would like to just get the email, right? what sort of channel uh, Dr. John likes. Secondary, I wanted to know if the Dr. John is influencer or there are any network for the Dr. John basically, right? Third piece I definitely would like to see like, do we have like any uh, Alexa, for example, in our case, Alexa touch point with the same HCPs in the past? If yes, what kind of you know, touch point we had basically, what kind of messaging we had, right? And based on all those historical knowledge, what is my next step basically, right? I don't want to just go to the physician and knock the door basically, right? And tell the same story to the physician, right? Next time, if I go, physician might not be interested to meet me basically, right? I wanted to make sure I have the right background behind the scene. So for the apps, I don't want to overwhelm with the data, right? I would say, hey, go to the Dr. John, right? On this time, probably use this channel. Dr. John is very well about, you know, disease education, this, this, that, right? And the next step is, as we see some insightful uh, information about Dr. John from other data sets, this is your, uh, you know, recommended action, next action, basically, right? So it has to be like, cater such a way that it gives the direction to the lab, basically, what to do, rather than give the data, hey, this is everything Dr. John has done, and go figure it out, what he has to do, what he has to talk to, uh, talk to Dr. John. And definitely, it cannot be done easily, right? Nowadays, AI can learn all the data, right? And looking at the journey, it can very well prescribe, uh, generate the prescribed, I would say, uh, channel as well as the messaging, what should we talk basically. So there are so much solution also uh, in the market right now, very much focused on the pharmaceutical actually, that will help the rep basically to, uh, you know, save a lot of time upfront uh, when they are reaching out to any healthcare provider. Uh, Fazan, I also can see one question here. So, uh, Chetan, as you emphasized on the importance of data and its usage, given different compliance and data usage restriction in US and European market, 
so with that mm-hmm. in mind how alexion is managing external and internal consumptions and how data platform strategies make that process easier for alexion of course right uh, when we say data governance it's not just one team basically who is doing all this thing right there are multiple functions involved within the data governance side so when we create the data governance function it comprises of various stakeholders from different functions for example there may be uh, involvement from the finance involvement from the commercial involvement from the patient services for example in our organization right involvement for from the uh, privacy legal and compliance basically right so data governance as its service framework uh, comprises of multiple functions basically which will help us to guide into right direction basically it's not like okay we are just trying to implement the stuff on the it side right so it is also a very important piece because technology is involved basically technology we should choose the right technology which can help or else which can enable us basically to follow all the processes that data governance uh, put in place actually so yeah right technology is definitely important but at the same time right team members are very important on the data governance framework basically not us as a team or individual can uh, you know decide what what is right or wrong because sometimes privacy plays a very important role because we might not be aware about all the privacy rules across right. you know uh, us or organization right mm-hmm. that's where the privacy team will come into picture they will analyze and tell us okay hey this is the data set we have and if we are going to the uh, privacy team i wanted to share this data to my field team for example right they have to analyze okay what are the risk associated with the privacy basically they will analyze and guide us basically okay hey this is allowable this is not allowable <laughs> same thing when when i it comes to the legal basically right there are a lot of legal terminologies when we are using the data coming from the third party right there are there are data clause also right so they will help us to guide into right direction okay hey what are the use cases that you can uh, as an organization basically can use right and what are the guardrail to share the data and the compliance is more about regulatory requirement again which will tell us is it re- within the boundary of you know us or state law basically right and we what we are doing is compliant or not right for example if we are using the uh, patient data for any kind of analytics right is it compliant or not first of all right uh, are we using those data compliantly or not right so those are the i would say uh, when we talk about the framework we need to keep in mind right it's not just function of it it is function of multiple functions where technology is play uh, has its own role to play uh, other department has its own role to play actually okay uh, so so uh, chidan you mentioned about collaboration and go- governance framework we were uh, again right now also talking about it so uh, mm-hmm. wherein you know everyone should have one version of truth so how is this established in alex shon if you can put some insights on it is it through uh, semantic layers to ensure everyone sees a uh, single version of truth under their roles and rights or i mean how it is uh, set up in alex shon if you can just let us know yeah of course yeah so when we talk about okay a uh, single version of truth right so one thing uh, we can think about what are the th- data that we have is it that we can master first of all right across the organization right so we do definitely have uh, definitely have the master data platform available for one of the entity right and I, as i mentioned mdm is one of the big function itself as well as technology itself which can master the data for multiple different kind of entities healthcare provider hcp hco product payer right so many thing right so it's a journey basically i would say right so you start with the one entity master it basically feather it to the different system as well as feather it to the de- different department start utilizing it right so it can sit within uh, you know in the platform which can help us to master the data right you extract the data make it available through the data lake or some semantic layer depending on uh, organizations uh, i would say uh, architecture how you want to make it available right? some people uh like to play with the raw data they will have right uh, access into the database they extract it they can generate their own insight uh, some people are more analyst kind of role where they have like little bit less uh, hands on to the data 
but once the, you have uh, some set of rules implemented and uh, those data is exposed, they can directly drag and drop, use it basically, right? So there are n number of ways you can implement it, but uh, and every organization has its own way to do it, I would say, right? And uh, it's not like always organization will have one way to do it, right? You will have like 10 number of different ways how you can expose the data to the end user. Uh, but the key is harmonization, data standardization has to happen in one place and then expose into uh, expose to the different user via different platform. Correct, correct. Thank you so much, Chetan, for being our uh, guest today and sharing your knowledge and enlightening us with all the experience and knowledge about the pharmaceutical industry and how this uh, rare diseases and patient recruitment and everything works on and how data governance is so important, important in uh, our day-to-day lives so uh, as a token of gratitude uh, we have planted uh, 10 trees on your behalf with arbor day foundation in the forest of great need i'll just pull up a, a e-certificate for you chetan and uh, uh, as a token of gratitude chetan uh, so yeah, uh, we have planted these trees and uh, this aims to reduce to 105 kg of co2 per year so please accept this uh, uh, th- uh, please accept this certificate and uh, thank you so much for being here with us and we look forward to have more such sessions with you in the near future thank you Ankita and team and I think uh, this is a great way to clo- uh, close the session actually right uh, looking at this right we are just talking about the technology and all but uh, right now if you see overall environment wise right yes there is a lot going on in terms of co2 right and i think this is such a great uh, token of appreciation i can say uh, i have been seeing uh, and as an election also we are also uh, having the missions to have like carbon negative uh, wall basically right? so we also are doing a lot of uh, things at our end basically but this is great to see like you know all the organizations are a little bit uh moving forward to uh you know uh, chime in into how we can make our earth you know carbon free so thank you so much Ethan. thank you uh everyone